Hi, stream one six eight. So, hey there, Nui. <laughs> I don't know why I was waiting for someone to type in chat. So, working today on uh, administrator tool stuff. So, I had uh, two front end apps: this old admin tool, and then the new fancy, or soon to be fancy, a uh, player. And I'm going. I've been working on moving all this stuff into here. So it's quite a bit to do, and so I no longer feel like I'm doing the final, final push to launch the game foundation because there's actually quite a, a bit of work. So once again, my plan to get it done in a week is turning it to like two or three weeks. But we've got to do it. So let me get oriented here. Right, so one thing that the admin tool did was connect to all three servers, and uh, the player app doesn't. It only connects to one. It's actually easier to see here. Three connections and then one. So one thing I need to do today is, uh, when in admin mode, I have it connect to all three servers. And, uh, yeah, cluster status and controls is basically this little area here. I need to recreate that, which I have a place for here. It's just not filling any data. And let's see, ticket list is, uh, see the old one has the ticket list here. The new one has it here, but we're not actually fetching the data yet. And then player list, similar list here. And don't have a panel yet for that, but we'll make one. Game versions and orchestrator. That's this section over on status at the bottom. Yeah, there's there's a bit of ugliness with the overflow. Anyway, right now there is only uh, one version in the of code, and there's only one or one host, so it's a single line. But uh, yeah, so that's another panel in here. Admin controlled email block list. That's a, yet another panel. Emergency control is yet another one. So each one of these is a different admin panel, I think. Also, I, I know what I did wrong on that. It's supposed to be a gear, but really a sunburst thing. The teeth are way too long. <laughs> okay, anyway. Ah. Uh. This is what happens when you take a day off. It takes longer to get started. Okay, let me see the state of the code. So, um, not the admin console, player console. I, had, I was in the middle of changing certain things here, right? Reflect ref state. Let me look at the diffs. Adding a reflect raft state. I had moved the admin key to admin Redux store. Looks like I was, I was just storing what data I get back from the uh, server about what state it is and the, what, what the cluster state is. This one looks out of place though. What was the last commit? Yeah, move settings. To, so, um, too late to uh, amend it, right? Let's push this one separately and say uh, player console fix fix bug in uh, where admin key is stored. What was I doing here? Just rename raft state to raft? Looks like that's all I had been doing there. Oh, probably because I thought state was redundant. State raft state, so it's just state raft. Okay, so I'm going to check this in. 
a store wrapped state from server. So let me work first work on um, having the client connect to all three servers. So that's in game connection, right? Connect to game. Right now it looks at the client configuration and there's a list of servers. So let me look at this debugger. Drag a key on there. Okay, so. Servers config is an array. So all we know about the servers is the host name and port number. I don't know the server instance numbers, which I'm going to need to know. Because in the uh, old admin tool, the, I the ID numbers were known. That's in the server configuration. So we're going to connect at first to a random server, not knowing what the um, server's ID is. I think once we do get connected, we'll, at some point later, we get the... Um, Oh, where do I show that? Network. Yeah, we get the server's configuration at this point. And my face is blocking it. <laughs> How about that? Hey there, I play poker badly. Is this early stream? No, I, I started at the normal time. Maybe your time zone changed, I don't know. 10 o'clock for me. All right. Yeah, so... After we connect to uh, one of the three servers in the cluster, we're going to get the configuration back out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So you're, yeah, you're arriving seven minutes in. <laughs> and it didn't help that it didn't stream yesterday. That kind of broke the uh, rhythm. Yeah, so we're going to get the server's configuration out. And um, I, I think one problem right now is that I have multiple realms. But actually, um, you know what we can do? We can um, check to see if there's only one realm, just pick it. How about we do that? And then later on when we have multiple realms, we'll have to have the server tell us what realm we're in. But once we pick a realm, we can, um, we can get the servers, and what we can do is look at each one and, and look at the public port and match it, up, match it up with the ID. Then we'll know which server we're talking to, and then we can go and connect to the other two servers. Hey there, 85 filter. Okay, so order of events. Let me write this down in my notebook. So uh, we first get the client configuration. It kind of looks like this. Can I copy that? So that's for example. So note, we only know there are three servers. And the host n names and port number, public port numbers of each. We connect to uh, one of one of the servers chosen at random. We uh, authenticate as admin. We get back the server the game configuration. So what do we need to do? Knowing the public port number, port number, port number of this of the server we first connected to, to which first connected we can look through these the game configuration to learn the ID of that server knowing the ID of the server to which we're connected we can then connect to all the other servers I already have a cog image that looks pretty good I could. 
I could do that. I, what I mostly I learned is that uh, when I drew this the other day, um, that the teeth are too long. That's why it looks like a sunburst and not a gear. I'm not really too concerned about the art right now. Mostly because it's embarrassing to work on it. <laughs> I don't like to focus on things that I'm not good at. Okay, so this I'm just I just went through here the my thought process on how we're going to um, learn what server we actually connected to and then connect to the others. Because normal clients don't really need to know server ID numbers, but as an administrator we do. Uh, but we don't get to know that information until we've authenticated it as an admin, which we need, for, for that we need to connect to a server. So, this I have done already. So what I need to do is uh, when we get back to server configuration, figure out what ID server we're talking to and then connect to the other two, or other n minus one. So we 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 get that in a certain message, right? Server configuration, I think, or on or configuration on configuration. Reflect server configuration. There we go. This one. So right now it's reduced. I think we also want to have... We need this logic, right? So I need to have some middleware handle this as well. Probably the admin middleware, right? R comes after L. Reflect server configuration. All right. What we're going to do here. I need to remember the port number that we connected to. Right? So that we need to, we need to uh store that. Actually, maybe you know what I can just do is uh have the game connection, not the admin middleware do this. Well, no. Let's let's try to keep this concern separate. Admin is concerned about what you need to do as an administrator. Game connection is just concerned about talking to the game servers. So let's have the admin tell the game connection uh, what to do. But game connection has to feed back to the admin like what we're already connected to, right? So let's let's have an action dispatched once we pick once we know the port number. So right here, dispatch actions a reflect initial server port. And then this needs to be an action then. You know what would be really cool is if there was, an, if there was something that could take that and make the uppercase underscore equivalent of that. That would be really cool. All right, admin middleware we go. Okay. Right. So once we know the port number, actually, you know, I just need it to be reduced. I don't. I don't need to do it here. Ready? Not picking up no keyboard noises. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because this mic is a dynamic mic, and so the um, level fall off is very steep. So if I if I just move like only a few inches away, you can tell the levels will drop down like a good like 20 decibels. And that's because when my kids are home, they make a lot of noise. And so that coupled with a noise gate, it's uh, because I don't have my own office right now. I'm in a like main area of the house. If I didn't do that, it would be really distracting whenever people come and go. Yeah, so the side effect of that is you can't hear my keyboard so well. 
But then also I need to keep close. My my mouth, mouth has to be keep close to the mic. I feel like sometimes I'm chained to this mic. Urgh, can't get away from this mic. <laughs> Pluses and minuses. All right, reflect initial server port. Yeah, let's have that handled. Let's have this handled by um, a reducer instead, because I, I need that to go into state. Yeah, let's have the admin reducer pick that up. So, what to put in here? I just call it what it is, initial server port. And what is it initialized to? I don't know, zero. There we go. Actually, that should be enough to test for now. Reflect initial server port is not defined. Oh, so it needs to have actions dot in front. Okay. Try that in. Let's look at the... Oh, I have a debugger still in there. Connect to game still has a debugger. I don't need that. All right. Eighty eighty six. Okay, cool. Next step, I think, let's see. Admin middleware. Right, when we get the server configuration, we need to basically figure out which server we're talking to and then ask game connection to connect to the other servers. Right? I'm just thinking in my head how I'm going to do this. <laughs> Sorry, I try to, I try to uh, when I'm streaming, um, vocalize my thought process, but sometimes it's difficult. The server configuration, hold on. That come, it came from here. So we have a, a configuration. All right. So that config, so the the configuration shape. Let's go look at that. Network. So it will have realms and then a realm name and then servers and that is an array. And in that array there is an ID and a public port. So, I think for now, we'll just pick the first realm. This only works if there's w only, this only works if there's one game realm, or we happen to connect to the first game realm. Actually, it's not that we happen. Or the um, client configuration reflects the f the first game realm. If when uh, multiple realms, I mean the whole the whole name of the game is all realms, right? So if it's it's more of a hopefully it's a win and not an if. If when multiple realms are defined. We need, we're going to need a way to, to know what realm we're in. All right, so for now, we just assume it's the first one. So const servers equals configuration dot realms. Actually, it's, uh, let's first get the realm name. So we'll look at config. Configuration realms. Uh, is it objects get keys? Is that how you do it?
get keys? Is that what it is? Mm. Keys? Mm, I don't remember. Gotta look it up. MDN object. Object keys. There we go. It is keys. And then just take the first one. So realms, realm name. Servers, capital. Okay. So if those are the servers, then we're gonna do with that. Actually, I'm gonna need this configuration later, right? Am I saving that in the reducer? I don't know if I am. Oh, I am. Okay, so it's going on under configuration server. Configuration server. Okay, good. Yeah, so we need to loop through and find which one's public port matches what we what we're actually connected to. So the index in servers doesn't matter. So I could just do a for each loop, right? What's this JavaScript? What? <laughs> I was four each, probably, right? Deprecated four of. Oh, okay. Or let server of servers. If server dot id right no server public port equals uh, here I need get state for this get state okay which reducer did I put it in admin admin initial server port. Is that the right place for it? I think so because it's the admin middleware that needs it and only the admin middleware. So if we find it there, then you know what we can do is just we can we can make an action to game connection saying what you've connected to is server whatever the ID is. So so let's make a let's add dispatch. Dispatch actions uh, reflect initial server what initial server ID yeah that's what we'll do and then we'll say the ID is server dot ID. And actually, then after that, I'm going to want another loop because I'm going to want to connect to all, all the other servers, right? Actually, not just here. I'll, I want to stay connected to all servers that we're not connected to. So that's more of a, that's more of a, another action after we're done, right? Connect to all servers. 
without any arguments. Okay, so that's two new actions I need. Reflect initial server ID. And then connect to all servers. Okay. Both of these are going to go to the game connection middleware. I'm actually wondering if I should just dispatch connect to game and have connect to game uh, do its thing depending on what state we're in. Hmm. I need to think about this. Because connect to game is sort of assumed that there's always only one socket. Now there's n sockets. And what one of the things this did was uh, show progress connecting. And it showed errors if it uh, couldn't connect. Or I mean, uh, if, if it got closed. I technically don't want to do that in an admin style connection, right? Because uh, because if, let's say you have three connections, one to each of the three servers, and you just one of them drops. We don't want to like stop what we're doing and say, error, connection to game lost. We really only lost one of our three connections. We only want to do it if there are no connections left, right? Actually, but we can tell we can tell what whether we're connecting to just one server or all of them by um, what mode we're in, right? There was an admin mode. Well, the fact that there is a key or not. Okay. So yeah, maybe I don't need. Uh, Connect all servers. Maybe it's just connect to game. Yeah, let's just do get connect to game. This doesn't exist anymore. And connect to game looks at the uh I'll just have it look at the look for the server configuration. Look for the other variables. How do? How do? Pretty good reset in peace. How how do you? What was in this action? Unconnected. Okay, that's not what I want. Connect to I don't want connect to game. Um, maybe I do want this. Connect to all servers. Yeah, okay, we'll we'll put that in. If nothing else, it can just, uh, right now dispatch to the other one. Connect to all servers. All right. Reflect initial server ID. That we should put where? I guess it goes here. Right? Yeah. 
and we're just storing them there. And then what? It's really, this is only, it's really only stored here temporarily. Because, uh, right, the game connection is going to pick this up too. This whole thing. Okay, so in the game connection, middleware knows that we're connected to one of the servers in the cluster, and this, this is only happens when we're in admin mode. So I don't need to check if we're in admin mode. It should initiate connections to the other servers, and I guess we're doing connect to game, but I need to be careful because this stuff about um, closing dialogues and junk, we don't want to do that we're in, when we're in admin mode. And we're making... Actually, when we're in admin mode, we only want to do these things if we lose our last connection, really. Actually, it actually never really happened. I'm trying to think how to solve that problem, but do I really need to worry about that now? Maybe not. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, this this is wrong. We don't do that. This is gonna do that, and it's gonna do it the same way that the uh, the views when we drag the admin key into place did. Is that here on admin authenticate admin start. Yeah. Okay, I think I sort of have an idea of what I want to do. <laughs> I want I wanted to do this but in a loop. Actually, hold on, wait a minute. Wait, before we get that far. Spiders now coming out to create traps. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh no. It reminds me of that Indiana Jones and the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> it's like there, the beginning of the movie where the guy gets covered with spiders. No. Oh. <laughs> Not session. I need to pick a place to store the information about what we're connected. Would that what would that be? Maybe it is session. No. No, maybe it's admin. Yeah, okay. I think this is where I wanted to store stuff. Hold on, no. The, the only thing I really need to store is sockets. So that's all in the game connection. Okay, yeah. So this all assumed that there was just one socket. I need to expand this to 
there are really two modes, right? There's a single socket mode where where well, no, there's not. It's not just that. I think I just I think I need to just expand it. So in addition to the socket, which will be like a default socket to any server, I'll want to have an array. No, not not just an array. I want to have a map from server ID to socket. And that'll work in conjunction with the server's configuration, I think. So that's something like this. Let names are going to be difficult here. How about just call it servers? Actually, it's passed by reference, right? So I don't need this get stuff. I can just pass it. These handlers can modify the servers. Yeah, okay. So this re reflect initial server ID can can do this. It can has access to socket and servers, right? And then the action of which we know the um, ID. So we can say servers ID equals socket. I just have to be careful that when we get disconnected, we need to remove that, right? So let's handle that disconnection right now before I forget. If socket, then set it to null. Close it. Actually, before we close it, let's say um, there. What was the for? How would the for each work with object? Was it keys for each? Ah. Yeah, okay, I did the same kind of thing up here. All right. So be servers, uh, no, be object dot keys servers for each ID. If servers ID equals socket. And then what do I do? I think I'm just going to, I'll leave it in the array, but set it to null. Hey there, Adrieve. Another thing this needs to handle, actually, is if the server configuration is set, because it's got to fill in the missing sockets. So let's reflect 
server configuration. Yeah, so whenever this changes, right? Wrapped, so here we go. Reflect server configuration. Thanks. I need all the luck I can get. <laughs> hey there, bug found. How are you doing? Bug found who finds lots of bugs for me. Okay, so this will be uh actually, you know what? I really don't want to pick act to If I'm already storing it into the state, do I really need to get it from the action? I guess it doesn't hurt. Same thing here, right? Configuration reducer will tell, tell me. So yeah, it's configuration. Yep. And then um, servers. It, it is a very appropriate name. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm going to make another... Um, hold on. Back here under admin, I had this note to pick the the realm out. I want I only want to do this in one place. So where would be an appropriate place? Configuration. I don't have a configuration middleware. I mean, I guess this is as good a place as any. Actually, well, let's just have the reducer do it. Yeah, let's have the reducer do it, and then this not pick up the action at all. So, we'll take this code. And under configuration reducer, let's have, let's have some more state here. Uh, realm. Okay, and then here, I can pull, put that note there. <clears throat> so this will be action configuration. Okay, then I don't need this part. Actually, then I can I can just do this, right? Well, no, let's leave that and then put that there. Uh, realm. Yes, okay. Then this can not worry about that. It's just, it's, um, gets, well, let's, let's get the configuration. Const configuration equals get state configuration server. And might as well get the realm while we're at it. I don't want to call convict get state more than once. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't matter. I do uh realm realm realm, right? Right, and then I don't need this anymore. And I'll pick that out. It's I need the same similar kind of loop. So server configuration could be to add a server or remove one. So we might need to 
connect to servers or disconnect from them in response to this server configuration being changed or or actually wait connect all sir okay hold on let's just have this one uh add and remove things from the server list So that means I should collect together. Collect together the keys of servers that are. Um, uh, how am I going to get my thoughts clear here? Okay, I don't want to re. Okay, I don't want to obscure. Those can't have the same name. Server configurations. Servers. Uh, server configs. Hey there, Romania. Hate. Enter as a hockey for play animation in a sprite. Eh. That's not so bad that it took you two weeks to figure that out. Some things you just don't notice right away. How's it going? It's okay, although I'm... <laughs> having trouble... Figuring out what I want to do here. Can you also say in here? Or colon? Has it always been of and I just didn't notice that? Or that's that's the same thing as saying servers for each, right? Server. These two are equivalent, right? Let's let's use this one. Let's approach. You only use for each map filter, et cetera, right? So you don't use the of. I happened to look that up this morning and like, oh, okay. Wait a minute, it supports array-like objects. Huh. stuff I didn't know. Object is not an array-like object, though. You can't use that for objects. Most likely not using them. Got it. Okay, so I need to do two things here. Thanks for the follow, Aussie Kid Official. So servers is our actually servers is an object, so for each won't work. So servers is an object where each key is an ID of a server and each value is a socket. And what I want to do is um, close the socket and discard it and remove it from the servers if it's no longer in the configuration. So how would I do that? I guess I'd have to search for the ID. So I have to do another search here. Or can I do an index? I need I I need to look at array prototypes. Array prototype. Index of 
a server. So this is an object, and this is an array. The server configs this an array. Servers is an object with uh, key. Each key is an ID, server ID, and each value is a socket. So this is basically close all. This is going to be close all sockets to servers that are no, no longer in the configuration. And then this is um, add sockets for those that are configured that we don't have in our servers list yet. So this is easier, right? So this is if not servers server config dot id then add it servers and to add it i'm going to have the connection done elsewhere uh, for, so we're just making it we're just adding we're adding that key to the object it's actually um after this i want to dispatch the same message i had dispatched elsewhere which is the connect to all servers So, dispatch. Okay. I think, do I want just, uh, contains? Has? Find? Or any? What does find do? Returns the value. I mean, that's fine. And actually, no, that's not fine. I need to. I need it's just a boolean if it's in the array or not. <sighs> I guess I'll look it up. JavaScript. Yeah, but the, if the element is not truthy, then it'll it's not going to work for me. So, uh, check if any element include, is that what I'm looking for? Includes, there we go. Yeah, but I want to pass um, a predicate. Not a value to find. What is this going to tell me? Sum, is that right, what I want? Ah, that's what I want. Sum. At least one element in the array passes a test. Yeah, so I want sum. If, uh, sir, um... Actually, it's the outside of this, right? If not servers config sum. Yeah, I, I'm, tr I'm trying not to use Lodash. Hey there, Clayman. Ever since I think it was Hideo or someone gave me the link to uh, you don't need Lodash. <laughs> It's like the argument is if, if it's built into JavaScript, you should try to use it and um, only use Lodash when, um, well, try not to use Lodash unless Lodash is really adding some value. If it's just giving you a name for something that's already in a prototype somewhere, might as well use that instead. Yeah, I think this is what I want, right? Uh, actually, if I'm removing stuff from the object, I can't do that when I'm iterating the object, right? So, don't I have to make um, servers to disconnect? Uh, 
what is it? Push? Is that what it is? Push. IED. Uh, return server config dot id equals id. Actually, that can just um, turn into that, right? So, for each id in the server's object, if there's no server configuration where the id matches, then push that id onto the list of servers to disconnect. Then we'll just loop through them. So servers to disconnect for each ID. Uh, servers ID close. Is that how I was closing sockets before? I oh, know we want to remove it and then set it. Uh, um, hold on. So um, let sock let socket uh, hmm, socket to close equals servers ID, and then servers. How do you remove something from an object? Is that just you? Uh, need to get back to object prototypes. Delete. It's an, a special operator. Okay, yeah, that it just makes me uncomfortable to have to do that. How do you do it with a computed property? Just do like delete servers ID. I want to do that before I um. I want to delete it before I close it because the close will cause this close callback to happen, and in there I'm going to change it to um. Not do a reconnect, basically. Unless it's it's still in this server's object. Okay, so that's gonna hopefully if I got that right, that's gonna disconnect. I should probably put some. Um, messages in here until I feel comfortable with this code. Disconnecting from server, actually this needs to be all back ticks now. Since it's no longer in the configuration. And then here we'll add a new one. to configuration. Actually, let's, let's abbreviate this to be removing from. Okay. I'm hoping it works with the indexer. Otherwise, I'm not sure how to do it. Like, let me let me look it up just to make sure. So, how do you? So, Java. So you have to remove value from object. Yeah, looks like you can. Okay. So finally, I want connect to servers to go through this list again here and actually connect to any that we're not connected to. So that means we uh, have servers at least. And say if not servers ID, then we're gonna connect. So how do I connect? I think I want to extract some of the logic from here and um, call it from both connect to all servers and connect to game. I want to rename connect to game also. That should be like connect to initial server or something like that.
and then rename this one. And then, cool, all right. And then I'll have a connect to server. So something like this. this so I need dispatch. Connect to server. And what will I have in here? Actually, I guess I just, all I really need is an ID, an ID number, don't I? Actually, if we're not connecting as an administrator, we never, we never do know the ID. So I'm not going to deal with IDs. Let's deal with it the way that this dealt with it, with the, where there's a socket, get socket, set socket. What does set socket do? Ah, I see. So we'll we'll do we'll do it this way. So socket. Actually, it's not a good idea to put it in the action, is it? Actually, let's have a deal with port numbers. Actually, we could also give it an ID. Why not? And if it does, if no, if no ID is given, we won't store it there. Okay, yeah, I like that idea. So it'll be ID. And then um, port is... Oh, I need to get the port number, don't I? <laughs> so that's this stuff. Sort of. Pull out the configuration here. That means I, that means I need get state. So get our get the server configuration current realm server, but we need to make that like server configs. So I want to find the server who's with a matching ID. So that was, uh, was that, it wasn't sum, it was like find, right? Right, so I want find. So, um, server config equals server configs, uh, find. Actually, I can use the same name, right? So server config ID equals ID. And if it's not found, it's undefined. So what do I do if it's undefined at this point? That means if it's undefined, that means there was an entry in the server's object that has no configuration. That shouldn't happen. If I sequence things correctly, but let's, let's, in the event that does, let's, let's catch it and say a warning. So if no server config, I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do an error, config, a console.error, no configuration for server, ID. That shouldn't happen. But if it does, I want to see it. And I guess if it does happen, I am returning out of this function. So skipping it in a sense. All right, so we've 
once I have its configuration, then I don't need to do this stuff. It's just server config that public port. Okay, connect to server. Goes back in game connection again, right? Oh, I need the host n host name too. Okay, I'm not sure what this was now. Actually, I guess I can cheat and look at the configuration I have. So being here, it's just host. Okay, so host. All right, so it's ID, host, and port. All right. So this reduces to this now, uh, this much of it, right? Oh, hold on, let's put it here. Actually, it's just host port, right? Host, it's just ID host port. Like that, and then this is the this is the rest of it that moves to here. Hey there, Sferis. How's it going? I'm uh, figuring out the um, plumbing, so to speak, in um, the front end connecting to the back end's servers. So before it was just one server, but now as um, when you're in admin mode, I wanted to connect to every server in the cluster, so I had to like decouple the logic between connecting to the initial server and then connecting to any server because when we're connecting to all servers, we're actually going through a whole list of them and connecting to each of them. So, yeah. This changes a little bit, right? Because we don't do that. Actually, this is... I don't want to do that here. That goes here. Do I want this connecting? And what's wrong here? Oh, I missed some punctuation. You know, if you alt and up down, it moves those lines. Did I know that? No, I didn't know that. Black magic knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> Sorry, I I I look at your name. And I think knowledge, but it's I know you're supposed to say knowledge, because it's you have knowledge, right? Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a quick little thing. Shift up, shift alt up down also copies. Actually, for me, I made it so that shift alt up and down makes multiple cursors. You can do all sorts of interesting things like, ah, like that. <laughs> it's actually more useful when you want to like, if I wanted to like put like a uh, foobar in front of both of those lines. Yeah, so yeah, that's one thing about VS Code is the key bindings, you, you people can customize them, so my shift alt up down is different from everyone else's. Hey there, Archie. I should have waved to knowledge, too. Hey there. Oh, and Hideo's here. I missed Hideo's messages. You see dispatch, you think Redux, you see delete, you scream. <laughs> Okay, Hideo, but um, that delete is for a very specific thing. That is because the server has been removed. The, the, the back end, the game has determined that a server is to be removed, right? So the front end has to s say, well, I have a socket op um, that I'm managing for that server, so I need to, um, 
take it out of the object, remove it from the object, and then close the, so under the socket that was in the object. So that's the only time I think I need a delete, right? I, can you also do it this way? Can I do servers ID equals undefined? So do the same thing. Because I would actually prefer having it undefined explicitly. Do you want to force pronunciation of your name? I either do prefer not the homonym of knowledge. Do prefer not the homonym. Okay. Okay, anyway, the uh this feedback to the UI, what do I want to do if I'm doing multiple connections? I think I only want to do that if it's a single connection. And I know that because it'll, it's the case where ID is not defined. So we'll say if not ID. Okay, and the same thing here. Actually, it's, I'm missing some things, aren't I? This all of this stuff. There's action, socket, get socket, set socket, servers. This only needed a get state and dispatch. Delete will remove the key and value. If you set undefined. Yeah, see, I wanted to remove the key. So I think the only way to do if the only way to do that is delete, then that's what that's the way it's got to be. If ID else set socket, so uh, and these names are sort of bad. It's what is it? it? Should be default socket set default socket. If there's an ID, then we're storing it in a very specific place, which is servers. Aha, so this is uh, another case where it's if id else. If servers id equals socket. I think what I'm doing if this happens is I am just setting a timeout and dispatching uh, to try to reconnect to that same server. So it would be dispatch connect to server. Uh, ID, ID. Oh, I need to know the host name and port number. Actually, I have the host name and port number. So that's easy. ID host port. You suggest using maps instead of using Yeah, so I just I I glanced at that a little bit ago and I hadn't been using it yet. Let me remember your suggestion because I want to get, I want to um, look into that, but I don't want to try to do more than one thing at a time here, or otherwise I'll get really confused. So if the connection has, is for a specific server, then um, we are going to just try to reconnect. Otherwise it's the default socket and that has special connotation. If we lose the default socket, we've lost our connection to the game. And I think here it's going to be also a little bit different. I want to include the ID of the server. Actually, what do I do if it gets promoted? Let me think about this. Yeah, I can't use this ID anymore. I can't really necessarily use that ID. Shoot. This is ugly. <laughs> 
These callbacks can't use ID port, host, or port necessarily. What is that drink? It's uh, it's from uh, Costco. It's kombucha, which is a uh, brewed. Tea. What is it? It technically it's you, you take tea and then you um. Uh, I mean tea is already brewed, right? But you um, it's cultured. What do they call it? cultured tea? Probiotics, fermented tea. There you go, fermented tea. Yeah, this this is the wrong way to go about it, I think. Who calls connect to server? This one. Connect to initial server. Okay, okay, so shouldn't this be handled by this then? And then I don't need that. This I do need though. Okay, close. We can't just use ID. We have to look up in servers if the socket is okay. So yeah, that's that makes sense to me. So we'll do. We'll, we need to do a uh, um, object keys servers for each. ID if server's ID is socket then we're going to try to reconnect When do I decide to do this logic, though? <sighs> Actually, if if it gets to here, don't I want to uh, set it to null? That's what reflect disconnected does, right? What's reflect disconnected do? It just does the auto login. Hold on. Then what sets it to null? Disconnect from game does. Okay, but if the socket is closed on us, Anyway, <sighs> yeah, I don't want to use this. We can't use the that host. I have to use um, something else.
I think I need a helper here. Const get server config. To do this stuff in it. Yeah. I need get state then. Okay, so... Let's do it this way. And this becomes get server config get state ID. I don't want to do that, do I? Let me not get confused here. It's realm and server. Realm and server. And that's that. Okay. I think I'm good. I got th actually, this is game config. There's the game configuration, then the servers within the game under a certain realm. Find the one with the matching ID. Okay. So I want to reuse that down here. Post. And then this is server config public port. The reason I'm looking it up again and finding it is that when we do a connect to initial server, uh, wait a minute. Right, this is picking from the uh, client configuration the host important number. But when we're connecting to all servers, we're pulling from the uh, server configuration. So in other words, if we're not an admin and we're connecting to the initial server, we only, we only get the subset of the configuration called the client configuration. And that doesn't have ID numbers. So this ID will be null. Because we don't have an ID. But we'll know a host, host name and port number. But if later we get, it gets upgraded to an admin connection, then we will know the ID because we'll have found it in servers and we'll then find the server configuration to get the host and port number. Actually, I guess that, that means if we, we knew the host and port number to begin with, do I really need to look it up again? I guess I don't. So I can, actually, this can be fine. This is, this is fine. I don't need, actually don't need to do that. I can convince myself I don't need to. And then, uh, yeah, it remains, it remains this logic here that I had before. What do I do here? The default socket, right? Okay, let me think about this. 
If the admin just gets disconnected from some but not all the servers, I just want to try to reconnect to them. But if I disconnect, get disconnected from all of them, what do I want to do? Actually, I'm going to handle this simply. I'm going to only do this if we're not an admin. So if not get state admin key, then do this stuff. That's what I'm going to do. Hey there, Pawn. Okay, in this one, there's an additional thing we can do, which is, uh, because I'm going to need this later. There's the ID of the server that we received it from. Oh, but then again, um, it, we might not know it initially. So I should just recover it. Uh, let's do it this way. If not ID. Uh, let's try to look it up. Uh, ID equals uh, servers. Sorry, it's um it's hard hard for me to think in JavaScript. <laughs> I want essentially that, but reduced down. It was find, right? And that returns me the ID. So I just do ID equals that, right? Yeah. Cool. So that'll be, that, that means we can recover the ID. But doing that in every message gets expensive, doesn't it? Can I remove an event listener and add it back with, uh, let me look it up. Okay. I can remove an event listener and then add one back. Ah, oh, that's complicated though. <sighs> if I could store the ID somewhere, that would be better. What if I made a function up here called get ID? And I need a corresponding set ID, don't I?
Okay, when do I call set ID? When do I know the ID? That is um, that's somewhere, somewhere completely different, isn't it? Isn't it under admin? Yeah, this reflect initial server ID. Comes back here. Yeah, so here. So, shoot. That's in a completely different context. <sighs> It'd be so much simpler if I just discarded the original socket and opened another one. But that just seems dumb. I can just leave this for now. I'll come back to this later. This will work functionally. It's just every message is going to do another lookup to find the ID of the uh, which server is talking to us. Okay, let's see if I completely broke everything. <laughs> I did. Game connection. Action is not defined on line 73. Ac oh, unconnected, right. This didn't have an unconnected. Oops. This one needs an unconnected as well. Okay, okay, this one is very specific, right? No, it needs to be also passed through. And then it was admin that set the unconnected, right? Uh, where was it? Actually, I don't see it where it should be. Actually, this is always going to be the same, uh, so it's going to be the uh, the same as what we do when we, uh, hold on. Admin start, right? Right, so we store the key, admin start, here it is. I guess I'll just copy it for now. It's, I don't like to have things copied, but I'll do it for now. Yeah, connect all servers, and the, what we do when we connect is we uh, authenticate as admin with that server. Okay, how much further did I get? Dispatch is not defined in 86 of game connection. Does it need to connect all servers for log messages or more? It's for more. Um, there are some messages where we have to tell every single server to do it. 
Although it makes me stop and think, maybe I just improved the back end so it doesn't matter which server we tell the admin tells it to, it just distributes it to the rest. Yeah. But let me think about that later. Let me um let me take that as a note so I can think about it later. But I need to finish this thought, this uh this thread here. All oh, right, I was looking at the uh, game connection dispatch, so that's eighty six. Indeed, there's no dispatch. Get state is not defined on ninety two. No get state. These are not really sorted very well. There we go. Action. Oh, I see. So I yeah. So let me let's do it this way. So we'll just say action, and then we'll say turn this around. Const. Uh that equals action. Get state is not defined 177. Right. Servers config 183. Server. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't I already ha extract that? Right, I can I can reduce this right to. Uh, well, we're gonna loop through it again anyway. Yeah, that's it's just let's just fix the bug. ID is not defined. One eighty five. Oh, yeah. There we go. I misspelled actions. Okay, moment of truth. Let me do a, a non-admin connection. ID is read only. Read only. 114. It says anonymous, but I actually says game connection. 114 is what it says. Oh, okay. So we should do like const actual ID. 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 Otherwise, look it up there. Okay, so far so good. I can log out, right? All right. So let's try the admin approach. So let's, cl can I clear that? Yep, and then do this. All right, realms is undefined. Okay, what's configuration realm? A condonal server realms What? That should have worked. I guess we'll put a breakpoint there on um game connection sixteen.
Uh, debugger. All right. It's undefined. Oh, wait a minute. It's it's the um Oh here it is. Why is it undefined? Oh, it's get state configuration, not okay, I got it wrong. I messed up. All right. This is not configuration, this is uh, state. And this is state.configuration. Do I use any sort of auto formatters? Not really. Okay, did it actually work? No, it only connected to one server. Connect to all servers didn't really do anything, did it? I suppose I need to uh, debugger that, right? All right. Pandanol, servers config, there's three servers, and then for each one, I think I need to debugger inside that. Ten. So we're getting server config ten. It's undefined. Okay, that's a problem. It's because it's a string, isn't it? Yeah. The triple equals is a problem. Because, yeah, that's a problem. Can I just do a double equals? I'll get a warning, but it's actually what I want. Now it opened all three connections. Oops. What did it do here? Quadruple equals. <laughs> Getting connection 78. Unconnected is not a function. It is sort of a weak point that I'm p passing a function as part of an action. I'm sort of um, breaking a rule of Redux, aren't I? It should only be plain data, it shouldn't be functions. It's supposed to dispatch actions at admin authenticate, and it's not doing that. Server config is assigned a value but not used, really? Oh, I'm just calling that anyway. So this is all unnecessary.
That's probably what not what not did not what did it, right? There's some some kind of weird state here. Removing server eleven. Why did it do that? Oh, because it has no. It got the server configuration. Why would it remove it? I should put a breakpoint there. Basically here. Why did it get there? Oh, it's again the triple equals. This that's bitten me twice now. The string and integer thing. I need to uh, clean that up. I need to do it better. Hold on, let me get let me get this straight. Initial load. Talga persistent login. I forget why that's done. Disconnected. Get the client configuration. Auto login so we don't do anything. Admin start. Logging in, connecting to initial server. We got the port number. We're connecting. We're authenticating. We sent our ID, we receive the challenge. We send our response, presumably. Yep, our auth response is sent. Login is complete. And then we're sending the game what? Subscribe to configuration. Subscribe to cluster state. And then we get back our configuration. We know what our configuration is. We know what our initial ID is now. It's 11. So we added 10 and 12 to configuration. Connect all servers. Connect to server 10. Connect to server 12. We received an unexpected message. I haven't handled that yet, anyway. Receive a message. Oh, that's, that's the raft state. Right, raft state. Then authenticate with which server? I think the problem is they authenticate. It doesn't say which server. I think I just totally screwed this up. Connect all servers. What does it do? Admin authenticate. So what does admin authenticate do? Or where is it? Is it authentication? Yeah, okay. I think it's I think the problem is send to game, it's it's not specific which server it's it's going to. Okay. I might have to take some back backward steps and rethink this whole um game connection. This whole game connection middleware. I'm not doing it right. I need to take a quick break to use the restroom. I'll be right back.
All right. Yeah, send to game is a problem, right? A lot of things just say send this to the game. Like this is an example of the problem, right? We this login complete doesn't know which server it logged into, so it's just going to send to the default server again, subscribe, and it's already subscribed to it. Same thing here; it doesn't know which server it's talking to. I guess what I need to include is an ID. With, along with the message to say which server to talk to and if there's no ID it'll just use the default socket But I should pr fix the problem of the uh, double equals, right? I don't want to get make that problem even worse. This thing. Ultimately, the problem is I'm using them as keys in an object. What? Maybe I should learn this map thing before I get much further. Eh, let's keep these up. MDN map. Can, let's see. They can be any value for a map. That's actually what I want. I think I want a map. The keys in the map are order while keys out of an object are not. You can get the size of a map easily. Map is iterable. So how do I make one? new map okay yeah i think then i think that servers if i make the servers a map then the keys stay integers right so let's try this uh new map all right let me go from top down where i see servers so it's not object keys servers for each it's servers that uh, has it can be iterated. Do I want a four of? Or do I want just a four each? Three arguments, value, key. Okay. So it's just servers for each value, key. Well, it's server ID, right? 
I guess I don't use the server. Hold on, did I get that right? Hey, why don't I have this check in there then? I don't know. <laughs> I just guess I'm just dumb. Oh, that's if it's null. So if not server. Right? Okay, that's so far so good. Servers here. Now can I use the indexer? Species accessor property. No idea what that means. Oh, here we go. Well, this is some kind of property. So can you iterate it or not? Yeah, that's the var of that and the um the for each I I think I prefer the for each syntax. It's basically the same, right? Uh and so, ex except that it's value key, not key value. What I'm looking for is uh, like do you index can I index it like that? Where do they describe that? Is it just a given that you can index it? They use get. Do I need to use get and not uh, index? I mean, I don't mind using get, I guess, but index would be kind of cool. And then set... Key value, okay. All right, well, I guess we'll just do it that way. Set ID socket. Okay, so here again, it's uh, servers for each server ID. If server equals socket, all right. So here it's uh, servers. Oh no, it's not. Is there a find in map? Well, hold on. Yeah, find socket. As? No. Guess we're doing for each. No, there's no find. Guess we're doing for each. I don't want for each though. Okay, we'll just do it without any has. Yeah, but I want to get if it has it, then get the i the key. It's it, I want one where I can pass a value. So the value is the socket, and I want to get the key back. So basically, if I know the value, and I want to see if if there's a key that has that value in it. So yeah, I'll just do it like this. Uh, we'll do let, and then say servers for each 
server ID. Well. If server equals socket. Actual ID equals server ID. That's what I we'll just do that for now. What's my keyboard? It's like an Adesso keyboard. Adesso AKB six three five UB. I just picked I just went uh, to Fry's and picked a, a nice looking cheap mechanical keyboard. Nothing special. Servers. Okay, so here again, servers for each server ID. If uh, server equals sockets. Um, okay, here I can't just set it to null. Actually, I can do it this way, right? Hold on. It's really if it has. If servers dot has ID servers set ID null. Okay, and then this is servers dot set ID socket. This is servers for each serv server ID. Okay. Now, does that at least solve the problem with the um, strings and integers? ID is not defined in 133. What that used to be. Used to not exist. Oh, um. It's if we find the cert. Okay, I, I know what to do. I think I know what to do. <laughs> Get key by value. Return object. That's if it's an object, though. But if it's a map, does it work? A map isn't an object. I don't think it has a keys, does it? Oh, it does have a keys. It's also values. I did the wrong thing here. It's not that it has an ID. It's if that, if the if the socket is in there somewhere. No problem, bug found. This would be so much easier if I had a reverse map from socket back to ID. Actually, why can't I? Why can't I? Let's make two maps. Servers by ID. And then IDs by... Or this is really sockets by ID. IDs by socket. Why can't we, right? Should make I should make some attempt to keep these sorted. Can I do that? Can I actually put it in the WebSocket object? I kind of don't want to pollute it like that. I'd rather just keep it uh, to two maps. That way I don't have to search either direction. I just It's a little bit more maintenance to, to keep up to date though. So servers gets replaced by sockets by ID. OK. 
Okay, let's... This really is a socket anyway. And I'm not using it anyway. All right, all right. You can do everything nice or not. I want to try to keep from doing bad things. I'm going to do things nicely. That's what I'm going to try to do. Aha, so I need both of them here. Sockets by ID, IDs by socket. Because it's actually setting it in both directions. IDs by socket set. Um, socket ID, and then sockets by ID set ID socket. What to name it here? Socket by ID? <laughs> Rimu server ID. <laughs> That's one way to make a namespace. Just put Rimu in front of everything. Socket by ID. If socket by ID equals socket, actual ID is. Let's call this socket ID. Actually, I don't need to do this, do I? I can use uh, IDs by socket. So I can do it this way, right? IDs by socket. Get socket. That was the whole point of doing that. Aha, and then this one I needed both of them. IDs by socket. And then I say if IDs by socket get um Socket. Then two things, right? IDs by socket, uh, whatever the erase is, delete. Delete socket. Uh, but before that, we're going to get the ID. Actually, let's just do that outside. IDs by socket get socket. If ID, then um, sockets by ID delete ID. There we go. Oh, no, I don't want to delete it. I want to uh, set it to null. Because we're using that elsewhere to uh, reconnect if it's not null. Well, at least it should be. I don't know if I'm doing that right. Do not remove or you will be fired. How about more like hacker? I was thinking underscore underscore hack, hacker. And not the way you normally spell it, but like this. Hacker. Okay. I need both of them, don't I? Servers by ID and then IDs by server. It's actually IDs by socket, isn't it? So set socket ID, and then this one is set ID socket. And that's sockets by ID. All right. So again, this is socket.
Let's rename this sockets to disconnect instead. Actually, shouldn't I do IDs by socket here? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm using the IDs only. And it's not to disconnect, really. It's... Server is no longer configured. And those are by ID. Okay. This is sockets by ID. So sockets by ID, delete ID. And then um, IDs by socket. Delete. Socket to close. And only if this is not null. If socket to close, then delete it. And close it. There we go, because we might not be connected. You have your own WebSocket class that inherits or encapsulates WebSocket, then you can have stuff the ID, and that's a good idea. That could that that's a that that's a good idea for maybe refactoring this. Okay, let's see if I got closer to it working. No, server is not defined. Line thirty one. Oh, it's socket, isn't it? IDs by socket, 196. Servers, 202. That's sockets by ID, right? And it's really if not Sockets by D has, as, as, ID, uh, server config ID. And that's uh, set that to null. Okay. All right. It builds at least, so to speak, build. I have no idea what it's doing. Okay. I think it got further without warnings, right? Um, there's still a problem with sending the messages to the wrong servers, I think. Oh, no, I still have this. Where was this? Line 17? Yeah, these can now be triple equals again. And it was 188. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's sending it to the wrong server. And then it, after a while, we get disconnected by the server because we haven't authenticated. And then okay, the other problem is unconnected is not being set again. Yeah. On the timeout, right? Yeah, I didn't include the uh, unconnected. Anyway, this is going to end up looping, though. It's going to keep um, 
the server is not receiving the authentication, and so it hangs up on us, and then we reconnect. I don't know what this already closing or closed means, though. Line 212 is where we're getting it. Oh, is that just racing? I think that might be just, just be racing, the close. Some things I want to change here. I don't want it to do that. And we need to include uh, which server we're authenticating with here. So, um, I'm just going to say ID. And then ID here. And then remove this. And this same thing, right? Um, this should uh, say which... Challenge an ID. So get rid of that. And then there's no ad asynchronous process. I don't even think I'm going to do a reflect logging in. Let me keep that commented out. Right, so there's an action because I need to embed that ID everywhere. Oh, wait a minute, admin start. Okay, yeah, this one I don't want. I don't want to touch, but yeah, let's just leave it the way it is. So it's just dispatch. Okay. So admin authenticate if there's no ID, then ID will be uh, null. Or undefined. So yeah, send to game, we need to modify that. So send to game might have an ID in it. If we have an ID, yeah, so sockets by ID is what we need. So here's what, how, what I'm going to do. So const selected socket equals if an ID is given, then we're going to look it up. Sockets by ID get ID. Otherwise, it's going to be the socket. If selected socket, then send to that one. All right, and then um, connect to all servers. So we'll, so here we go. We'll put the ID there. What else do I need? I think that's it. Let's try it out. Don't think it worked. Let's see why.
Okay, adding 11 and 12, connect all servers. Connect to server 11. Wait a authenticate. Oh, to 11 and 12. And we authenticate because we connected. Authenticate to 12. Send to game 12. It received a message, a challenge. It responded to the challenge. Oh, where the ID is missing. So the challenge is not going to the correct server. That was in here, right? Ah, yeah, here we go. Fixed. Try again. That rhyme was server. Yeah, I, I see that. I don't like I don't like to do that though. <laughs> uh oh. It didn't it didn't work. Let's see how far it got this time. Adding server ten and eleven. Connect to server ten and eleven. Authenticate to ten. Authenticate to eleven. Send to game eleven. Receive a challenge. Again, it didn't, the admin challenge is missing an ID. Oh, hold on. Um, I think I know why. The, uh, these messages on receipt of messages don't include the ID. In fact, yeah. So when we receive a message, receive message, I put the ID in there, didn't I? Maybe I forgot to do that. Open, close, message. Oh, this should say ID. And then the receive message has an ID in it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do that part. That's what's wrong. There should be an ID in a message. If the ID is known. If the ID is known, it'll end up being null, which is fine. So I'll put ID at the end. Actually, I just add, them, add it to all of these, right? All of these have an ID now. To say which server we received it from. If we don't know, then it's the default one. All right. The one we care about it right now is the auth challenge. So that's this, right? Admin challenge message ID. And then it's message challenge, right? Challenge is ID. Hey there, Dries Jans. Yeah, right now I'm trying to get my uh, front end tool to connect to multiple servers at the same time. So I need to start, I'm tracking which uh, server ID we're sending and receiving messages with. So let's see if I got further there. I'll clear that. Oh, I actually th think it got further. 
Cool. So it sent an auth response to all three servers, but it didn't subscribe to stuff on the third on the other servers. So I think I need to do that next, right? The sub these subscribes. Oh, it actually sent it to the first server again. Yeah, so we have um we sent the subscriptions to the wrong servers. Was that where do we do that subscription? Was that game connection? Don't think it was. It was like profile or something, right? No, it was admin. Login copy. Here we go. Yeah, so this this will include uh, which the ID that we logged into successfully. Action ID. So ID gets included in these. All right. Try again. Cool. So now it's subscribing to all three servers. We probably got a bunch of redundant configurations. That's fine. So subscribe to server, so connect to server 10 and 11. Receiving from 12. Is that this actually after? Yeah, so at this point, we don't know what the server is. Then when we, when we get the configuration, then all subsequent receive messages have an ID in it. That's good. That's what I want. So authenticate to 10. Challenge 10. This async process I need to get rid of. Uh, what was that? Auth challenge, I think. This one. Okay. Which one is this? Pro progress? Why is there a connecting? I don't think I want that one. That was a... Uh, admin start, right? Shouldn't that be an admin? I'm just losing my place all over the place. <laughs> it's not in admin. Admin star is not in admin. Why? Why did I put it here? Anyway. Uh, admin authenticate. Send to game. So where, who is setting this... Oh, it's before connect to server. Hold on. Admin start. Can oh connect to initial server. That that might have been where it was. Yeah, this. Okay, so I only want to do that when if the key is not set. So if not get state admin key. I'm kind of being nitpicky right now. <laughs> I just don't want to see actions I don't need. So What was that? Reflect, to in it, reflect initial server port? Right. So we know it's port 8088. Connect to it. Authenticate. Send that message. Receive a challenge. That's our challenge. Send to game the response. Login is complete.
complete, which causes two subscriptions. Receive back to server configuration. We know it's server 12. We connect all servers, so we connect to servers 10 and 11. We uh, receive from 12 some things we asked for from subscriptions. Uh, that shouldn't be a zero. Oh, that's because I hard-coded that. I'll have to go back and fix that. Authenticate to 11. Send that to 11. In the meanwhile, authenticate to 10. Send that to 10. Receive back a challenge from 11. Re receive back one from 10. So send a response to 11, and we're completed. And then subscribe to 11 stuff. Send a response to 10, and subscribe to 10 stuff. We're receiving stuff from 11, so the configuration gets set again. That's wrong. Initial server ID shouldn't get set. If it's already been set, why, do we, why are we dispatching it again? Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. This connect all servers we always want to do when the server configuration is reflected because we might it might change what servers we want to connect to. But in, it ends up doing nothing. We receive more stuff from 11 and 10. And we're good. Okay, so what did I want to just reflect initial server ID. I don't know if I don't know if I need to do that. Like this one. Uh, let's actually uh, look where that's called. Okay, I actually only need to do it if initial server ID is not known. So let me put that in here. If get state Admin initial server ID is not known. If it's not known, then let's do then search it and dispatch it if we find it. And let me change this so it's servers for each. Server. There we go. I just like that syntax better. Nice. So that one was, it's a server 11. I actually kind of like this Redux action view. Connect to 10 and 12. All right. I think we're looking okay. I need to review the uh, server messages. Is there anything here that might be sensitive to the ID besides auth challenge? I don't think any of these... Actually, I, I don't really... If I know it doesn't need the ID, I can just remove it, right? So I don't need to know the ID of these. This one I might need to know. Actually, do I need to know? Maybe I don't because um, it doesn't matter who told us the configuration. Yeah, login status only comes non-admin mode. Same thing with new yeah, and these we don't need. Player data profile. Raft state we do. Right, so we have the ID here now. So I can do that. Tickets doesn't matter. None of that matters. Cool. Okay, now let me clean this up. If I had any warts here to fix. Get server config. Who calls that? Is that just called in one place? I'll leave it. Connect to all servers. 
Right, so if the socket is not truthy, it means we're not connected, then we're going to ask the game to connect to it. And when we do succeed to connect, we authenticate as an admin to that same server. All right, connect to initial server. We're passing through unconnected. We don't know the ID of the server yet. And we're using the client configuration to find that server. For, and we pick a random one from the client configuration set. Okay, so connect to server. If we know the ID, we store the socket in our maps in both directions. I, we associate the socket ID bidirectionally. Otherwise, we don't know the server yet, so set socket. Actually, when we do know the server, do I want to keep that socket around? And what if we lose our connection to it? Let's see. Yeah, when do we actually set it to null? Disconnect from game? And when is disconnect from game called? Oh, someone, okay, that, that won't happen for an admin. That won't happen from an admin. That will not. Actually, that's... Okay, so for an admin mode, disconnect from game, it means something special. It means um, we should probably just clear out the configuration, right? Which will close all the sockets. So that means, yeah, I want disconnect from game to do something special for the admin. Yeah. So it's if get state, which we don't have. Admin key. So if there's an if it's an admin connection, otherwise this is a non admin connection. If it's a non admin connection, we're not gonna need to do that. So I can abbreviate this and then put that. If it's an admin connection, we're disconnecting everyone. So that's easy. the easiest way to do that would be to clear the server configuration. So that would be um, dispatch actions reflect server configuration Null. Well, just no configuration. Should I be explicit though? I should probably, probably be explicit. Explicit. Then I don't need that stuff because that should be handled for me. Let me see if that works. So if I'm connected as an admin, and then I hit log out, what does it do? It's reconnecting. It shouldn't be. Why is it doing auto login? Okay, yeah, I messed it up. It's doing auto login again. It shouldn't do that. And it also didn't ref. Select, oh no, it did. Hold on. No, I didn't do it right. Disconnect from game is uh, not doing that. Is that, did I misspell that? Oops. Hold on. It never dispatched it. Okay, now we're at this stage and hit log out. Disconnecting session reflect disconnected. Yeah, why is it doing this auto login?
Why is it doing connect to server 11? Let's do a debugger. Debugger. Log out. Interesting. So can I look at the Redux state while it's paused? Admin key is not, is truthy. So why did it skip over this? I don't know. Const key equals well oh, state. Admin. Oh, look, the key is null. How did the key get to be null? Weird. Let's ask Redux what happened. It's not null. It became null on disconnect from game. Hey, Isley, how's it going? Oh, wait a minute. I think that might be the f my own fault in the reducer. I have it set to null on something, right? Yeah, session end. Okay. That's the problem. The session end clears our admin key. So that means I got to do session end. Can just do session in at the end? No, we should get the key first. That's what I that's what I should do. Const admin key. And then if admin key. Alright, try one more time. And then log out. Cannot read proper realms of null. Oh yeah, because I cleared it. So when did that happen? Session that happened session end. Configuration reducer. Oh, you can't um, skip around in this when um, when it's crashed. Anyway, right? It's this reflect server configuration, no configuration known. Um, because it's null. Well, yeah. Oh, I just have to make, I have to make it not null, but um, an empty array, an empty object. There we go. Let's try that. It didn't like that. Too much punctuation. 
All right, now log out. I think it's because realms is null. Yeah, okay, so this, the reflect server configuration needs to be updated a little bit in the configuration reducer. If it is null, we don't want to, okay, so this is, um, we'll say const realms is that. If realms, actually, I can just do it this way, const realm realms if so the first one otherwise null just to match our our shape above there and log out uh, okay yeah so it got further and there's another assumption made up there. Which action are we dispatching? Same one. Okay. Only in the admin middleware. Yes. So this might be null. So if... What do I want to do here? Yeah, only if, only if a realm is selected do we do this stuff. Actually, can I just do an early exit, if not realm return? Yeah, let's do that. And then log out. Game connection has the same problem. Game connection 188. Yeah, so it's the same thing. Okay, so let's initialize the servers uh, no longer connected up here, and we'll say if realm do that else, then it's all of them, right? So that equals uh, all of them, so... Sockets by ID keys two o eight oh yeah okay so i can just do it this way All right, and log out. For each is not a function. For each is not a function. It's not a function, why? Why wouldn't it be a function? Because it's either going to be an uh, an array or whatever keys I thought keys are turned to an array. That's a map. Am I wrong about map keys returning an array? It returns an iterator. Okay, so I need to turn that into an array somehow, right? How do I turn it into an array? Need the quick answer. So JavaScript array from iterator. Oh, 
Oh, that's a good idea, bug bound. Use spread syntax. Yes. That'll work. I don't yet have that JavaScript intuition that you and others have, obviously. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, was there one more place I needed to do that? Is it? Let's see. I'm guessing that's where it's happening. It's an array, so why is it, why is that? Well, that's not where it, that's not where it crashed. Crashed somewhere else. Huh. Yeah, so that wasn't it. Um, let's turn on the pause on exceptions and then uh, refresh. That's okay, neither do I. <laughs> Let's see the exception. Okay, here's the ex no. Is that the exception? Okay, yeah. Oh, I screwed up. I, sc I know what I did. It's server, I'm looking at the wrong thing. This is not an array, because it's not. It That should be like this. There we go. So let me think let me see if I if I don't need that, then I'll be happy. Let's get rid of the debugger too. Log out. No, I still need it. Entries. So we'll we'll do the spread syntax thing. Sounds good to me. So continue. There we go. So log out, start, disconnect from game, session end, and uh, there are no servers to connect to. And it did disconnect all this. Yeah, so it disconnected all of the. Uh, Oh, no, it hasn't disconnected them. Oops. <laughs> it didn't con It didn't just disconnect the uh, sockets. All right, why not? It should have gone through here. So... Let's put a debugger here. Actually, I would have seen that in the console. It should have said rem removed them all. I didn't probably should look for that. Is server config is always instantiated as an array iterator with for each? Uh, it should have been uh, an object. I just screwed up. Not awaiting all. Well, these aren't asynchronous, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so... It should go through here. It didn't. Why? N oh, no, it just... Okay, so it might have, and it just... Okay, it did. It did remove them all. So it should have closed them all. So... Why does it show that it's still going? That's the weird thing. Oops. Oh, this is wrong. Um, the indexer doesn't work. It's a get ID. Let me go through and make sure I didn't make that same mistake somewhere else. So I'll search for that followed by an index. And that didn't... Okay, so that was, that was what it was. It was that place was doing an index. Okay. Can't do index on a map. You have to do get. And let me remove the debugger. All right. 
and log out. And we're all disconnected. Oh, there's an exception. Is this my exception? What's the trace? This is not even my code. Okay, don't pause on exceptions anymore. It's some kind of internal thing, I think. Oh, what is this? Oh, is this the timeouts? It's okay. That I think I know why that's happening. So log out complete and then two seconds later it tries to connect again. Yeah, it doesn't it shouldn't be doing that. That's probably because of the close events that are coming back. Right, it just had a blind reconnect. So Uh, I think we need to, I need to, um, close after removing it. What do I do? Where do I do that? By the way, disconnect from game didn't need, need those things. Take your... I'm, I get a little confused. <laughs> That's what happens when you get older. Wait a minute. Reflect server configuration, right? It's supposed to... Yeah, okay, here we go. I do delete it and then close. So, hmm, interesting. Okay, see you, Spheros. Stream time. You guys should check out Spheros' stream. Spheros is working on a game in Unity. And last time I was looking at the stream, it was about uh, you were uh, you had a game action figure in the game, and you were uh, working on um, what was it? Making sure that each each gun only fired once. So that's that's as much as I could understand from it. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a it's a different kind of programming that I'm not familiar with yet, the using Unity. I think what I need to do is put a debugger in close and see what's happening. Let us see it. So on logout, here we go. It's going to break. Okay, so it is empty. Oh, wait a minute. We've already dropped the key, right, haven't we? So it's going to go into here. I see what's going on. Yeah, we should not have this uh, default socket anymore. That needs to be dropped. a good time to drop that yeah so it's, it's doing that stuff okay i know it's i know it's wrong then let me refresh that get rid of debugger What is that drag and drop operation? What I'm doing is, uh, this is a drop zone, and it's just dragging and dropping is the same as um, clicking it and picking a file. So I'm clicking, I'm, I'm, I'm basically um, giving the script my uh, private key so we can use it to uh, respond to the authentication challenge. So what I'm using for that is uh, React drop zone. So that looks like 
it's react dro dash drop zone and uh, use the drop zone the use drop zone hook um, calls back whatever function you want whenever a file is dropped there so it um, using another react hook called the callback hook so it'll call this function for every file that's accepted by the drop zone and so what's that what that's doing is uh, reading it into memory and then passing it on to my code but that use the way you hook that into the dom is you take the um the props and then you um make a span i make a span out of it with an input and the input has the input props the span has the root props and then to know if you're if you're dragging over it that's the drop that's the is drag active so it's pretty cool that way i don't have to constantly be clicking there and picking a file i can just from another window here i can just drag the key onto it every time All right. It's authentication as logout start. Disconnect from, okay, I'm, I'm a little lost. <laughs> Disconnect from game. Yeah, okay. Yeah, here we go. I want to do that. Actually, I want to do that up front. Always. If we have a default socket, close it. Then, if we're logged in as administrator, clear the configuration. That'll, that'll close all the rest of the sockets. If we're not logged in as administrator, just reflect that we've disconnected at that point. All right. It is pretty neat. Pretty quick, and now hopefully I've fixed everything. Log out. And it will not trigger t callbacks. Nice. And then my network connections are all nicely terminated, right? Terminated, terminated, terminated. Nice. Okay. What else should I test? Let's, let's make sure I didn't break anything in the, in the normal login process. Guess we will... Um, oh, what are these warnings? I got warnings? I don't like warnings. Oh, unexpected message. Yeah, I know about that. I haven't... Okay, that's fine. Let's clear this. Cool. So everything is looking good as a normal account light, right? Log out. Nice. All right. Time to check it in. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been actually three hours, and I haven't done a commit in three hours. That was a big deal, though. That was uh, updating the game, mostly the game connection middleware to support multiple connections. Right, okay. This is all going together, and we'll say uh, support multiple, well, multiple server connections when connecting to the game as admin, you, uh, connect to every server in the game simultaneously. Hey there, develop it. Hey, it's going slow. It's it's always slower than I think it will be. So right now, what I'm working on today is um, integrating admin tools into the uh, game client. So most of most of the work today has been making sure we connect all servers in the cluster if we're logging in as an admin. And um, now that I'm done with that, for the that was three hours. <laughs> now that, uh, what I intended to work on next was um. Basically, all of the controls in the old app, which looked like this. So um, I already have configuration. But I don't have the cluster status in there yet. I was going to add the cluster status, server versions, um, getting the ticket list for everyone in the game, and the players list. 
and pulling that into the, the new app here somehow. So probably just adding panels. Maybe I'll do tickets next because we can show that without too much work. So when you're logged in as a normal user, you only see your own tickets. When you're logged in as an admin, you see every ticket in the game. And so we're already showing tickets. I just need to have it show the tickets of everyone in the game. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's stuff I need to get done. It's work. Okay. That's what I had next, right? And I had cluster status. Let's let's bump that down. I want to do ticket list first. Ticket list. The old admin tool, I think, just subscribed to tickets somehow. Let me see how that was done. Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to tickets. So let's include that message when we um, are logged in as an administrator. So this this right here. So we're already subscribing to configuration and cluster state. Now let's subscribe to tickets as well. I And I might get what I want already, but maybe not. Let's see. Oh, look, it just worked. <laughs> well, that was easy. And then picking any one ticket is not working. Is that broke? Is that just broken? Let me log in as a normal user. Tickets, click a ticket. Oh yeah, it's just broken. It's supposed to, like it shows there, it's supposed to select a ticket for us to, to view the, the details of it. Now what does Redux say is happening? And what's the state difference? It's just changing selected ticket. Huh. Okay. So is it the view then that's broken? The view is a ticket, right? No, there's a panel for this. Oh, that might be why it's broken. All right. Because I didn't break out the tickets panel separately. That's probably still in the playing activity. Yeah, there's this tickets panel. It's not broken out into its own thing yet. Yeah, so that selected ticket is not going to be passed into it. Because the playing activity doesn't actually pick that up as a prop. The only prop it's getting is is admin. so... Yeah, so that, that's the problem. I need to break this out as a separate React component. So we'll make, an, we'll make it here. Tickets panel. And let me copy some of the boilerplate over. I don't think I need use callback though. I think I need actions, but I'm not sure. And then it's uh This is the body of it. So that goes here, and then the rest of the boilerplate is down here. Tickets panel. So it needs is admin on show new ticket dialog, which we don't have yet. And then we need a selected ticket and Just putting that in there until I find out what it is. Hey there, Frost Ice Cold. Trying to do a simple HTTP client in C++ with a boost. Nice. HTTP client is not that hard. You lost yourself compiling with compatibility toolset. Is it so boost is giving you a problem? 
Yeah, I remember HTTP client not being that big a deal. Okay, maybe it was a big deal. Mine is 1,300 lines long. But a lot of that is just, like, the diagnostic stuff. Oh, and I supported um, multiple transactions and multiple connections simultaneous. So if you kept it to one connection, one transaction at a time, it's probably a lot simpler. Yeah, a lot of the stuff I ended up doing in the client was was tracking state for transactions and connections. So if you don't need that much parallel client connection transaction stuff, it'd be a lot simpler. It'd be basically this parsing response would be the hardest thing, right? Checking to see what lines go with the message headers and which lines go with the body and then interpreting things like transfer encoding and doing um, like chunked transfer decoding and all that stuff. That's probably the hardest part. Handling um, all the headers that are not allowed. In the, yeah, so if you're really pedantic, you can check for which things are allowed and which ones aren't for chunked transfer encoding and all that. You asked me about HTTP. I don't remember. Yeah. If you wanted to do it from scratch, you would read the RFC. So that is uh, 7230. I think I say that somewhere. Yeah, 7230 is the bulk of HTTP. There are some other ones like 7231, 3233. So... I don't recommend doing it from scratch unless you enjoy doing it like I do. Um, I would look for a library out there that already does it for you. So, I, if, if anything, I think Boost would ha have already done it for you, but I don't know. But yeah, I had fun doing. I had fun doing it myself. Oh, the HTTP two is on my list, but for my game, I don't need it because. I only use I only use enough HTTP to bootstrap my web sockets, right? So if I look at my network connections, and I um, I guess I gotta re reconnect. Um, the only thing I use HTTP for is to upgrade to the um, web socket protocol. <laughs> so that's all that's all, that's all the HTTP all the HTTP I use, and then from then on, it's uh, web socket stuff. So it doesn't matter if it's HTTP2 or not. Simple REST API, yeah. I would just uh, try to find a library that does the HTTP part for you. And then and then your API is just basically translating routes into um, lookups for whatever in your API. Yeah, lose two-thirds of a year to do it over HTTP2. I mean, it sounds like fun. All right, I lost the props I needed. Is that the prop I needed? Yeah, this one. I need that prop there. And then selected ticket. I think we lost that prop somewhere. Yeah, we lost selected ticket. So let me find out where it is in the reducer. Okay, it's part of the session. So I would go um, state session. Selected ticket. And then see if I fixed it. So, ticket, click a ticket, didn't work. All right. Oh, because I haven't, I, I defined this, but I'm not actually using it. So, playing activity, you need to remove the old tickets panel. And then import it. So, oh, why is that missing? Oh, that needs to be moved here. That needs to be moved here. And that means it is now two levels up. And then this is uh, settings panel and tickets panel, which means I need to bring it in with the index. Tickets panel. Kitty cat is yelling at me. I don't know why. Did uh, I didn't drop any frames, so sorry. It's probably on Twitch's end. Oh, props is under. Oh, okay. 
Oh, right, because I didn't update um, the reference to the component. So since it's a full full blown component, we need to put it in JSX and then say spread sin, spread operator, whatever that's called, for the props. There we go. Fixed it. The only problem I have is that it is too big to fit the uh, space I I'm allocating for it, but that's a design issue. But probably what I'll do is I'll put it I'll put this stuff over here because I don't need that much real estate for the ticket summary. I could put the new note in a more compact form, maybe under here, because that's logically where it fits. Like if you want to add a note, it would be at the bottom of the history. You're going to add a new note, and then this table could probably fit nicer here. But anyway. I want to test uh, looking that from the admin perspective. Okay, so it worked. Back. So I can look at whatever selected ticket I have. That's a city name. All right. Are you able to add shortcuts to your screen just like Adam? I'd like to see the shortcuts. Shortcuts, shortcuts. You mean like in chat or somewhere else? Oh, shortcuts in the browser? I don't have a, a well-organized shortcuts, browser shortcuts like Adam does. Or, or no, you mean, you mean the, the uh, keys I'm pressing. I don't have that set up. Um, I was meaning to look at that. But I kind of held off because I didn't I didn't think that anyone was interested in it. But there's some kind of overlay that shows like down here, right? It sh it'll show the keys I'm pressing. I don't have that. If you think it's useful, I can look into that. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It, it's on my list. I just um, yeah. Hasn't been there hasn't been enough demand for it, but I'll I'll leave, I'll put it back on my list again. Um, another thing is Adam uses a lot more shortcuts than I do, so it might be less interesting to show what I'm pressing. You hate seeing it, yeah, Karnak. That's right. You know what would be cool is if it could be an optional overlay that people could opt into. All right, I'm going to check in that change. I got like 40 minutes left and then I, I have a tight schedule. So I do have to, I need to remember, uh, reserve some time to eat. <laughs> okay, this was fixing the tickets panel. So uh, player console, fix the tickets panel. Actually, while I'm at it, maybe I'll move the profile panel out as well, because I don't think it's broken. Because it just... Actually, wait a minute. There already is a profile. Oh. Oh, well, that's easy. It's So it's not even a... So it just, just needs to be promoted to be a panel. So I just need to take p profile, exit out, put it to panels, paste it, uh yes update them and we will um put panel in the name yes index and we'll import it profile panel let's sort these and then we'll pull in the panel here And then I don't do that anymore. And then this is just profile panel. I'm wondering if I could remove this boilerplate as well somehow. Okay, and this goes, right? Can't resolve actions in profile panel. The number of levels of indirection? No.
this might be some I've seen this kind of error before where if you just npm start again it goes away it's like the node.js is not perfect in realizing what you change multiple audio channels yeah that's that that's been asked for a, a lot that would be great too where you could opt into uh, music or something and then I could I could pick my uh, favorite music, and if you liked it, you could opt into it. Otherwise, you listen to your own music, I guess. We got the same thing for game au game audio. Some people don't care about the game audio. Okay, this is still broken. I must have messed it up. Activities panels? Activities panels profile panel. Oh, is it this? Is that what's complaining about? Oh, okay, I just wasn't looking at it closely enough. I don't know if it would double the bandwidth. Audio is a lot smaller bandwidth than video, so I'm doing two megabits per second. You could probably squish the audio into uh, 128 kilobits or less of that. So it would only add maybe a 10% uh, or, or less. Yeah, it was, it was a misleading error. It was that I had this wrong. It wasn't, this was okay. It was this row was bad. So we're, we're good. Okay, I can't see the profile panel if I'm an admin. I need to log in as a non-admin. Okay, cool. So it's... We should test this out, right? Let's change my name. And then... Um, I don't have this control yet, but over here... I have the ability to uh, pick a name and say... Unmask it. And then... Uh, close the uh, name change ticket. So this will be no longer masked. Let's change it back. So again, close that, unmask the character, and we're done. And I can change my email address too. Let's do that. Oh, that's interesting. It popped back to Bob. So something's broken. Let's see the transaction that happens here. Change it to Bob, please. Huh. We asked it to change the mail to Bob too, and it came back as, oh, is it email versus mail? Is that the problem? Let me look at change profile. Okay. Uh, Not just JS files. There we go. Um, it's going to be... Uh, change profile check in the profile system. Email. So that's the problem. The front end says mail, the back end says email. Okay, I don't know when that I broke that, but I must have broke that at some point. Oh, this is the middleware. I need the actual um, panel. Aha. So I must have broken it and just not known. So yeah, this needs to be uh, mail, email. Actually, why don't I just change, make it email? Or make it... Um, Oh, hold on. This does, says, this does say email. So why does it say mail there? 
Is, it, is this on change profile? Where does that go? Change profile action, okay. This just takes the changes and embeds them. So what's going on here? Yeah, why is it... Why does it say mail and not email? Why mail? Set mail. Oh, here it is. It's the assemble submit profile change. So that should be uh, email. <laughs> One letter there, screwed it up. Okay, let's try again. Change it, and it really is changed. So it comes back and says it's two now. Nice. And let's change it back. Let's change our password. So I typed in the same password for both. So that really, what, what it'll do is it'll just change the salt. And that, that's fine. So let me test that by logging out. Yeah, log in again. All right. Download my data. Does that still work? There's my data. All my name changes that I did. Current hash and salt. Tickets that are involving me. Looks good. What other things should I test to make sure I didn't rake? Oh, I should be able to um, add a note to an existing ticket, right? Yeah. Unless it's locked. And let's, let me look for a locked one. That's not locked. I need to lock one of these. Let's lock one. Let's lock the seventh one. Lock. So now that it's locked... Yeah, so not only will it not let me hit it, but it says this is disabled because the ticket is currently locked. Nice. All right. Fixed a few broken things there. See ya, Frost Ice Cold. You have a good one, too. Okay, so I moved the profile panel in and I fixed some bugs while I was at it. All right, so we'll just, let's just say I fixed profile panel. Make profile into profile panel. Fix changing email address. And that's about it, right? All right. Okay. What's next? Ticket list is there. Not all the tickets controls are there. Should I work on that next? So log out, if I'm logged in as an admin, I don't have the, all the controls that I want. So the controls that I want are um, lock and unlock. And actually, I should have permission to reopen it if I'm an admin. So let me fix that first. That's that's an easy one. That's within the tickets panel. The uh, tickets panel, right? Tickets. Actually, it's ticket. I think. Right.
So if we're the admin, then we, sh we should be able to do any of these things. So let me do an um, is admin and add that as a prop. And that's a double not state admin key. So if key is truthy, then we're an admin. And I'm making it, uh, with the double not, I'm making it explicitly a Boolean. So I can say up here, um, and not ad is not, not it, if it's locked in, we're not an admin. But now it shouldn't restrict me from reopening a, a locked ticket. Actually, um, in the re in the old admin tool, if you try to reopen it and it's locked, it won't work. Oh, actually, it will. Okay, it's just locked from normal users. So I should be able to do the same thing here. Oh yeah, that got updated. It did indeed. So reopen. Didn't do anything. <laughs> what did it transmit on the wire? Drops the bait. How are you doing? Need to force yourself back in on learning coding. You know, one way to force yourself to learn coding is to try to do it on stream. There are a few people I watch that are doing that. And the cool thing is that people who are viewing your stream will help you out learning. So if you get stuck or you need motivation, your chat is always there. Even if it's just like two people in the channel, uh, you'll, get, you'll get someone there to help you out and help motivate you. Well, to me... It's still fun. It's getting past the procrastination, right? You want, like, I want to do things, but I procrastinate. I get lazy. Forcing myself is not a bad thing because it's just really, it's, okay, another word, a better word would be motivating yourself. So for me, like, it's not just that it's fun. Like, being fun is not enough for me. I need to have, I need to actually get going. And that's partially why I stream is it kind of, motivates me to um, actually do it. Otherwise, I would... Um, oh, what's this? This is, a pro this is a problem. Why is it reconnecting over and over again? <laughs> it's just one server it's reconnecting over and over again. That's interesting. Anyway, yeah. You're going to be streaming in July? Great. Uh, you'd be surprised, Drop Zibate. Even if you're absolutely new, you'll get one or two people who just like to help out and maybe are interested in the programming language or the framework that you're using at the time. Oh, I wonder if we're being disconnected because this was an invalid operation. Let me watch more closely what's going on here. That'll connect to the first three servers and it should be stable, right? I'm wondering if it's this reopen that's causing a problem. Yeah, look, we got, we got disconnected on that. And then now it's connecting and then, I don't know what's going on here. It's hanging up on the connection for some reason. Oh, it's connecting and then not doing anything. That's interesting. Why? Okay, it's weird. <laughs> There's something going on here. I need to fix it. Oh yeah, not many people do, but it's still there. Uh, if you want to talk, ask questions, share information on the Discord, that's you're always welcome to that. If I can't help you, I'll probably refer you to to uh, someone else who maybe specializes more in in what you're. Doing. Like, for example, if you're doing a lot of web dev stuff, I like to uh, shout out Adam Stream, and he's got his own Discord and his own uh, uh, notes that you can look at. So, you know, if I can't answer it and it's web dev related, I might uh, recommend you check out Adam's notes or his stream or um, his Discord. He's not streaming today, but he'll be back tomorrow. You want to do non-web dev stuff. Okay. Well, there's a lot of non-web dev stuff. So there's that's a huge subject. <laughs> okay, the connections are stable up until I tell it to try to reopen a locked ticket. I must be doing something that's illegal. 
So let me try to find out which one is doing the request. Okay, it's this one. I think it hung up on the connection. And then when this... It's, it's hanging up on these connections for some reason. Why would it? And then it's making more connections that are not doing anything. Maybe I need to look at this. Is this it? Oh, the, this could be it. Let me see what's going on in the console here. I'm in challenge, I'm in challenge, blah, blah, blah. Select ticket, open ticket. Wait a minute, why? Oh, it's just the whole ticket is there. So change ticket state, send to game. Here we go. So we're sending to any any socket. So our initial one is probably going to go to. And then why does it do a connect to server? Oh, because it got disconnected. That's why. It got disconnected, so it's trying to reconnect to server 11. And then it's closing or closed. So it's the logic in, that's happening when we're trying to reopen a socket that got closed. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. Where the problem might be nearby. Azure event grid is having Redux in the cloud. I'm not sure what that means because to me, Redux is just a way to uh, separate logic from data in terms of state. So yeah, this what Redux means to me is exactly this, the separation of actions from reducers that store things in state. So this being, the state being the com combination of all your reducers and each of your reducers just taking an action and then changing an, a piece of the state. And that's what Redux means to me. So what does that, what does it mean to have that in the cloud? I don't know. Maybe what that means is the actions and the dispatch would be rest calls and the state would be on some database in the cloud. I mean, that sounds cool. So you can maybe uh, not worry so much about the hosting, but sort of have just a, a store of data with defined actions in an API to change it in the cloud. If so, that sounds pretty cool. That would help people jumpstart server stuff pretty quickly. <sighs> so it's the... I don't want to get sidetracked too much. I just have to remember that what's currently broken is reopening a closed ticket as an admin. So let me write this down as a note. So currently broken, closing a ticket as admin. So I think it has to do with the format of the message that was sent. So, uh, this message, player ticket change state. Oh, because we're not a player, that's why. So that's the, uh, um, we're, we're sending even though we're an admin. There's a different message for changing the state of a ticket when you're an admin. So I need to fix that. So that's causing the socket connection to be closed and then the, the that's leading to another bug where we're not dealing with close correctly so that would lead to this close right what happens there it'll find it and it'll set a two second timeout after which it'll reconnect to that same server it'll skip that because we do have an admin key so it, it's on the connect to server right right connect to server admin authenticate it'll send Oh, ID is undefined. Is that the problem? Yeah, there's no ID in the admin authenticate. There was an ID in the connect to server, though. 
So this ID is bad. Interesting. Oh no, the ID is okay. It's the unconnected that was broken. Oh, right, this is the wrong unconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I can't use this unconnected. I have to use... In fact, I can't use this host or port number either. Hmm. So I have to get the, the host somehow. And the port. And the unconnected. I can't use the ones passed in because those were for the initial connections to the game. And this is for a specific server, which we don't know which one. Yeah, serverless, it's one of those words where there is a server, but it's more like it's hosted for you and you don't have to uh, worry about its implementation. Yeah, that sounds cool. Nice. One of the problems I have is this unconnected is a function that is being passed around through an action, which is bad. I know exactly what I want here because it'll only be in sockets by ID if we're an admin. So we're always going to re-authenticate as an admin. So why don't I just put that in here? So that's authentication. Admin start, I think. Yeah, this. And we'll know the ID. It's ID. And that's that. what remains is to get the host support number given the ID. So I had a helper here, right? Get server config. I think that's what I want. Because from the server config, I can get the host and public port number. Right? So that's what I want to do here. Okay, so there is a chance that the server might be removed from the configuration at that point. So what do I do there? We'll just say there's no no configuration and we'll return. That's fine. And here is what I want, right? Const equals const equals Cool. I have a feeling that this and uh, part of this and this stuff is redundant. Anyway, let's see if that fixes it. The fix will be, it'll be disconnected, but it'll reconnect. If I got it right. Oh, wait a minute, there's another problem though. The original default socket will, will be old. So we'll get problems when we try to use it. So reopen. So now it reconnects and we get our tickets back. But if I hit this, it's not going to work. It's going to break. Yeah. So, yeah, I know why that is. Because this original socket is no longer valid. Where do we set the socket to null? Disconnect from game.
I think what I actually want to do is uh, not use this default socket if we're an administrator once we start using the sockets in this in these maps but uh, the socket we pass to handler needs to be something this one has to be something so I guess when we get to this point we'll pick a socket if we're an admin we'll pick something from this map Yeah, because it'll get stored. Actually, a, a, bit, a good place to put it would be uh, when it gets stored, right here. Reflect initial server. No, not there. Where does it get stored? I guess it is this one. Where does that get called from? Ah, it's a one-time thing when we first get connected and we first get our configuration. Yeah, that's the earliest point. Yeah, okay. So here I can actually set it to null. That's what I'm going to do. So set socket. Set socket null. And then here, if it is null, we need to pick one out of this. And it can be one, any of them, as long as it's yeah, as long as it's not null. So if not socket, let's have a selected socket. So let selected or default socket. If there isn't one, we need to pick one uh, from. Actually, we. Be best if we could just pick the leader socket. But right now, I don't care. I just pick any of them. Okay, see you, develop it. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow the schedule might be a little be, might be a little weird. It's gonna be three hours pushed forward, so twenty hundred hours UTC instead of seventeen hundred hours. Just a FYI. Sockets by IDs by socket. map has what prototypes I just want to get one of them can I just look at values and pick the first one that's not null yeah let's just do that if not default socket default socket equals IDs by socket actually it'd be easier to just do sockets no IDs by socket Uh, keys, right? Dot find. Oh, we established that this is an iterator. Does iterator have find? Iterator. I want iterator prototypes. I guess I just want, I guess I want a list. So that find a uh, socket where the not not socket or is it sum right not find. Actually, can I just do that? Array prototype sum. Test whether... Okay, now that returns true or false. I think I do want find, right? Returns the value of the first element size. Okay, so it is find. So find something from the keys of IDs by socket where it's truthy. Okay, so that'll work. And then 
socket is a default socket. All right, let's try that out. Didn't break yet. Reopen. So that'll disconnect me. And then I reconnect. Get my tickets back and then... Okay, still didn't work. <laughs> um, okay. What did it actually send? Yeah. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, let's do... Let's change this around and do uh, sockets by ID, and we'll say const default socket ID, default server, and then default socket equals sockets by ID default server, because then I can log it. Hey there, well, Rita. Things are okay, they're slow. I should just get used to being slow in JavaScript. So it's not keys. Well, it sort of is. It's find. It is actually is ID. Okay, but go back a bit. That's the sock default socket. I can use the other map to log what it is. So const. Default server ID is um, IDs by socket get default socket. And then I can do console.log sending to server. Okay, let's use back ticks. Default server ID. And let's just for logging purposes. Sending to initial server. That. And then I wanted to have another uh, log message for now so I can see these uh, disconnects. So I want to see here. Uh, connection to server ID closed. And that's fine. That's all I really need to see. I am using Redux. Yeah. What's that triangle extension? That one is CMake. CMake tools. I use that for C++. So we're not using that today because it's all JavaScript. Uh, for uh, C++, I use that for my build system generator. Bookmark extension. That is bookmarks. That lets me do things like this. I can say, yeah, I want to remember that spot and then go somewhere else entirely. And then now I can go between those two spots really easily. All right, let's test this out. Key. Let me clear out this old stuff. Oh, why does it say undefined? It shouldn't say undefined. Okay, I messed that up. That should not say undefined. Let's debugger this. Whoa, not a whole lot of room up there. <laughs> Get rid of the console, there we go, more room. Default socket's undefined. What are the sockets by ID? There are no sockets by ID. What's the default socket? Undefined? Everything is null. So how are we able to send a message when uh, Thanks for the follow, Pi.
Oh, wait a minute. It will, this is the game connection middleware. So it only, I only really care for certain, okay. I, I was just being dumb. We don't care about this at all. It's only for certain um, actions, only for a very specific action, actually. It's if action type is uh, send, what is it, send to game, something like that. Send to game. Actually, uh, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, okay. Only if that's true do I want to log this stuff. Like that. And then that can move there. This is just for debugging. I'll remove it later. Mouse reducer s action function name. Then wrap it. That might return undefined. So my reducers always you need to have for, for Redux you need to have a a type. So I'm not sure what you mean. If we're talking about Redux reducers, you want to uh, do something different based off of the type of the action. And there's no way around that because in Redux, they actually have reserved types like at, at, init uh, to do the um, initial state, you know, creating the initial state. So with, uh, with the reducer you put in chat there, I don't know if it'll work. Well, I guess it would work if you had... You had to know all the special actions that they'll send you. Because what are, your reducer is... I guess I just don't understand what is mo monad. May, maybe you're right. I don't know. All right. Check, let's check this out. So... Take it, we'll reopen that. Oh, what, I have error? Oh no, I knew about those ones. Never mind that. Yeah, I wanna watch this now when this happens. Actually, this should have told me who it was sending to. It's still undefined, why? Confounding me. Debugger it. Undefined. Ten. Wait a minute. Oh, it's returning me the key. Okay, I have it backwards. All right. It should be uh, IDs by socket. Keys. Find one. Or just find any that isn't null. Actually, it'll just return one of them, right? Yeah, okay. Let's try this again. We tried setting up Chrome Debugger plugin for VS Code. I haven't, like months and months ago, but I haven't felt like I needed it. I mean, it, it might help a little bit where I could use VS Code instead of this little debugger window. So I know it can be done and yeah, just haven't bothered. The boilerplate, yeah, it takes some getting used to and it took me like about a week to get used to it, but it can be even worse if you, um, don't uh, keep it organized. Okay, there we go. So we know it's server 12. All right, so I, I can get rid of the debugger. Reload. And that'll, okay. Connection closed. And what did it do after that?
Connection closed. Connect to server. Authenticate. Send to server 11. Receive the challenge. Sending it. We're subscribing in junk. We're receiving stuff back. Okay, now what happens if I hit reopen again? Interesting. Is it that when it connected, it didn't store it? That might be why. No, it, it should have stored it. Well, that's weird. Let me print the actual values again. Um, how do I do that? This will be um I oh know it's in it's either initial server or it's not. So how did it how did it send to it when it was closed down here? Yeah, these worked. This it sent this one. It sent this the last message it sent was subscribe to tickets. And then when it got down to here, it's like, oh no, it's closed. How did that get closed? Oh yeah, that well that font is uh is something you install in Windows and then you just set your uh font family to that. And then you can turn on the ligatures to uh get these cool things triple equals and equals arrow turns into that Let's uh, include that in the message. I don't know if this will help, but we'll see. Oh, it's past two. I got us. I got to end soon too. Okay, they reconnected, and then. Okay, so what can I tell from this? These are all null. I don't think that that's right. Here's the last one that sent correctly. No, those are all null too. Two, three, eight. What is that line? Oh, look at that. So the sockets by ID map is corrupted, I think. Sockets by ID. Yeah, because I'm using IDs by socket. The sockets by ID is not getting uh, fixed. So that's is that in the clo the close that I'm supposed to update that? Oh, I'm never actually updating the maps. Shouldn't I be doing that? Yeah. Um here it should have been set again. Let's put a console log here. Set socket for ID. A 
Let's see if that's not being done on the reconnection. And then that causes a disconnection. Then it reconnects, and it actually saw the set happen. Here's the close. Here's the set for the new one. Yeah, there's no way to tell from the WebSocket whether it's open or closed. Actually, there's the ready state. Ready state 1. Then now that says 3. Ah. Ah, uh, oh well. I guess it doesn't it doesn't make any doesn't help to log the WebSocket. Oh, you know what I should do, do is uh monitor the network tab and do that again. I wonder if it the reopen one got closed. So that one got closed. That one just got opened. It's still open. Huh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the one that got closed. Here's the new one, right? Yeah, it's weird. Thanks for the follow, Destin Data. Yeah, this one got closed because it sent an illegal message, and here's where it reopened it, and it's not using it when I try to um, send to it. That's server 11, right? It's trying to send to server 11, but it's going to the wrong object. Because why? Oh, are we calling get socket? Is that the problem? Send. No, it's supposed to use the socket, unless we give it an ID, which we are, which I am. Uh, that's in the action, right? Actually, no. There's no ID. So it's going to use socket. And socket is set here. Oh, that's why it it actually found the one that was closed before. It's also ID 10, but it's the old socket because I didn't remove it from the list. Yeah, we got to do that. Um, where's a good place to do that? I guess here. If we find it. Uh, I might as well just do it here. ID socket delete. Socket. Actually, I can do that up here, can't I? Actually, I don't even need to do this for reach. I can just, well, why am I doing it this way? It's const id equals uh, ids by socket get socket if id then do that and then this is all always true.
And then I should do the opposite. Sockets by ID. But it's not a delete. It's a set ID to null. And then two seconds later, reconnect. Okay. Let's see if that fixes it. Illegal operation. It didn't dis show me disconnected. I remove. I removed the the console log. That's why. Uh, let's put that back in here. Connection to server ID closed. because it's closed and then two seconds later opened and then if I click it again okay so it's just going to pick a random server and try to use it and then it's going to close get closed two seconds later it'll reopen it okay so that part is fixed now does log out work <laughs> I might have screwed that up it just removed it removing closes the socket Close still gets called, right? But by that time, it won't be in here anymore. And if I wanted to see that, I can do it here, right? Oops. Uh, we'll just say console.log connection to, ser to some server was closed. And I should see that when I, when, uh, I log out as an admin. Yes. Connection to some, so I see it three times, actually. Cool. All right. Let me check that in, and that's maybe a good stopping point for now. I'll leave the console logs in there, although I do want to remove some of the... Uh, I want to remove the socket because I think that didn't add anything. And really we wanted to say opening socket to server, whatever. And this, let's just say socket to server closed. And then this one. I don't need these anymore, actually. This becomes a not. I don't need this anymore. All right. Okay, so this change, player, console, permit, admin to uh, do anything with tickets. Oh, wait a minute, I did the wrong one. Don't st st stage this one. Then this one is uh, fix bugs in uh, handling sockets. So, what's the first bug? Oh, when a socket is closed, uh, use IDs by socket to find uh, which server it belonged to, or corresponded to, which server corresponded to. Or to find the server to which it corresponded. And uh, remove, remove the entry from IDs by socket and set or clear the corresponding entry in sockets by ID. Then when scheduling the reconnection, 
I use the uh, host port from the configuration server configuration. Thanks for the follow. Don't know how to say your name. How about EFS? Okay, and then um, uh, when the server ID for the initial connection is known, uh, drop the reference to the, drop the default socket reference. That's that part. And then uh, when um, handling an action in the uh, game connection middleware, pick a default socket. If there, it, if a default socket isn't set, pick one from the um, IDs by socket map. There we go. Bug fixes. When are you going to let people work on this with you? Uh, probably when I start doing game dev. So, well, technically people are working on it with me by giving me suggestions and help. But, um... Yeah, probably it'll be it'll be, there'll be more options to help when I actually am doing game dev because at that point I'll be able to give certain permissions to people's accounts in the game to let them do things in the game like make areas of the game or you know, edit things. So yeah, it'll be at that point. So I don't really want to give an estimate of when that'll be because all my estimates up to this point have been wrong. But I'm trying to get there, and I'm thinking. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as they get through that checklist of things to uh, get the game online. If you really isn't interested in a hobby project. Well, for my game, it's going to be kind of an art artistic open source thing where it won't be the code that people might work on, but it'll be the stories, the content of the game. Hey there, Rally Monkey. Yeah, I'm going to be closing up right now because I need to uh, eat before I go. So I uh, got to go pick up kids from school. So I need to wrap things up. I didn't get to as far as I hoped to get today. That's like every day. I should just get used to it. So I put in code so that when you are connecting to the game as an administrator, it connects to all servers. So we're managing now maps between server IDs and servers. And then I was working on the ticket list, and I'm not completely done yet. I needed to... Probably I'll resume this tomorrow, but I'll be um, going, adding some stuff here in this ticket list, specifically that uh, you should be able to reopen, lock, unlock, and uh, do everything that you can do in the old tool here. I guess that's, we already have add note. I don't have lock. So I need to add lock, unlock, and I guess I don't I need I don't have this. I need to add the uh, new notice. So that's similar to uh, if you're logged in here as a normal user, there's like a report issue. So for the administrator it'll be like send notice to a player. And you'll work on that tomorrow and then cluster status and controls and player list. Yeah. This will probably be tomorrow. Finishing up the ticket list, doing cluster status controls and player list. So, and then tomorrow my schedule is uh, this. I'll just type it in. It's going to be 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. PDT, which is 20 hundred hours to midnight ETC. That's the schedule for tomorrow. So it's also in my Discord, which I'll link now. If you want to have any questions on coding, there's a coding channel there. I also, I have an announcements channel that I post my schedule to, and... Uh, links to what I work on from day to day, which is all all of this that you see in OneNote is is public and readable. So I add a plan for the next day, like the night before, and um, try to list more than I'll actually get done, just so that I don't run out of the things to do. And um, once I get through this admin tool stuff, then the rest of it is uh, client update system, 
journal, snapshot, housekeeping, some stats, terms of service, privacy policy, and then and then we'll, we'll be ready to take this foundation of the game and launch it, which means to put it onto Amazon Web Services, let people actually log into it, and then I'm going to start like, trying to put game dev stuff in here. Actual game. Because right now, when you log in, there's no game. There's just, it will be here <laughs> and here. So working up to that point. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. I'll be back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific or 20 hundred hours UTC. Let's see who's streaming now. Does anyone want to be raided? Actually, there are a lot of people streaming. Bye, Nui. Hope you enjoyed today. Let's see. Oh, and Carne is streaming? He normally streams late at night. Hmm. Well, Sparos was on earlier. I, I rated Sparos before, though. Let's rate someone I haven't rated in a while. How about Irish John? You guys know Irish John Gaming? He is working on a game in Unity. It's a pirate PvP game, multiplayer. And let's just check out what he's doing today. All right, I hit the button. So hope you guys have a, a great rest of your day. See ya. Bye, Ralrita. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. Bye.